Hello everyone, my name is Christine Pasco, and I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing here at Accelerated Technology Laboratories. I've been working with LIMS and laboratory automation for more than 25 years, and today I'm excited to share my experience with you. We're going to be learning how we can leverage LIMS to achieve regulatory compliance. Today we're going to be focusing on three key learning objectives. The first is learning how key LIMS functionality can be expanded with further automation such as positive ID or barcoding. Next, we're going to understand the key requirements of ISO 17025, which are those that are required for cannabis laboratories. And ISO stands for the International Standards Organization. Finally, we're going to be gaining insight into how automation can actually help facilitate compliance to the standard based on how the LIMS is configured. So now that we've defined our three key learning objectives, let's look at the agenda. We're basically going to be talking about three main areas. The first is LIMS. What is a LIMS? Why would anyone need one? Um, why do people leverage Excel and paper um, versus automation? Um, what is automation? How can it be leveraged to reduce the overall cost of the laboratory and increase productivity and efficiency? And then finally, what is regulatory compliance and how do LIMS help to support that? The analytical cannabis laboratory plays a very important role in ensuring high quality finished product. And this begins from testing raw materials through production, through finished products. So whether you're making edibles or be uh, food and beverage products or pharmaceutical products or skin products, um, testing is critical each step of the way. In the next slide, we'll learn a little bit more about some of the things that are tested for in a cannabis testing laboratory. There are many um, laboratories that are still using Excel to manage their testing results. This is something that always surprises me because they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for state-of-the-art instrumentation, for highly trained analysts, for maintenance contracts on the instrumentation, and the final product, which is what the laboratory generates, is placed into an Excel sheet. Um, and people always say, well, you know, it has a very low cost. Well, I would also argue that it has very low functionality and there's really no audit trail. So if you change a result, there's no way of knowing when or if a result was changed. Um, and also, it is very easy to change data there, just because there is no audit trail. Um, you can accidentally also delete data. Um, data can easily be shared. This um, Excel file can be emailed throughout the laboratory or it can be placed on a shared drive and different people can access it. Um, but what is often overlooked is that there's much higher labor cost because people have to interact with so many different types of Excel templates that are set up, you know, for different pathogens that they're looking for or different chemicals or compounds. And then also it's very difficult to keep track of the QAQC that's been done. And if any chemicals and reagents were used in that testing to make sure that you can link those back to the testing that was done um, using those consumables. So that if there's a recall on one of the products that was used in the testing, you'll know which test results were affected. Um, with Excel, it's easy to make backups, um, but they're also easily corrupted. And I've talked to a number of labs that have built in macros um, into their Excel files, and when they become um, too full of data, they become slow and bloated, so someone has to go and manually archive data out of those Excel sheets. And, and finally, um, there, there's poor security. Uh, it's very easy for people to, to go in and modify data. So these are just a few of the reasons that, you know, laboratories like using Excel, but also many of the challenges. Um, oftentimes when people are using Excel, they're also using paper logbooks as well as uh, Microsoft Word for generating their reports. When we think of paper systems, as we just talked about, we think of a lot of interaction between the analyst, chemist, microbiologist with Excel files, typing in data, possibly from 
bench sheets into Excel templates and you have lots of room for transcription errors and just the interaction back and forth with these Excel sheets cost time. If you talk about the limbs, it's really about increasing productivity, becoming more efficient, having a high data integrity because you're eliminating transcription errors. Oftentimes you've interfaced your instrumentation so there's no copying and pasting required. Um, also it's about efficiency, uh, it's about traceability, understanding what reagents and supplies were used in the tests that were conducted, what QC was done on those tests, um, and then also data sharing. It's about data accessibility, increasing communication across your organization. It's about leveraging automation such as um, barcoding to rapidly find samples in the system as well as implementing barcodes for label generation so when samples come in they can be quickly accessioned um, and also it makes for much better resource utilization. So you're using your staff, your highly trained chemist and microbiologist to focus on the chemistry and not pushing paper and cutting and pasting. This slide depicts the entire solution. So basically you can have laboratories that implement barcoding to basically rapidly accession samples. They can also leverage dashboards so that managers can have key performance indicators at their fingertips. And then you also have a report designer so that people without IT experience can design simple reports on their own. Uh, next, there's sam sample scheduling, so you can schedule uh, shelf life studies, stability studies, routine collections, followed by instrument integration. This has a very quick return on investment and allows the data from the runs to be automatically imported. And some instruments also support the ability for the limbs to send down the run list to the instrument, and then after the samples have been analyzed, it can automatically send the um, run list back to the limbs for import. And then finally, clients can either email, print, or fax their reports to the clients. Um, with the addition of a client portal, customers can check the status of their samples 24-7. They can also submit samples to the laboratory as well as pay for them. And the nice thing about that is that um, the laboratory will have a heads up in knowing when samples will arrive because the clients will have already pre-logged them for the laboratory. And then clients can check the status of their samples on either a tablet or a smartphone or a laptop. So it really provides clients a way to be more connected with their samples and it also results in higher customer satisfaction. So why are limbs critical? They really are the backbone of a laboratory. They not only keep track of all the samples that have been received, any quotes that have been sent out, um, invoice information, but they also keep track of the employee training, um, their permissions within the system, any data that they've entered into the system, and there's also an audit trail for any changes that were made to the data. At the end of the day, laboratories really generate data. That's their job. They don't make widgets. Um, they don't provide um, consulting services. They generate data. So it's really important that that data is of the highest integrity that's possible. And having it in a paper notebook where it needs to be, you know, uh, transcribed to an Excel sheet. There's a lot of room for error and there's also a lot of interaction between analyst and paper. Um, we've worked with so many clients that have gone away from their paper systems and it's just amazing to me in the cost savings. Not only in the maximization of their resources but the elimination of all the paper and the cost to manage um, and maintain and store that paper. And also um, going paperless really is good for the environment in that it reduces the carbon footprint. So it's it's a good option all around. And also it uh, supports regulatory compliance because you have an electronic record of your results as well as an audit trail for any changes that were made to those results. Next, let's talk a little bit about positive ID. Positive ID is barcoding, it's RFID, it's any way that you are guaranteeing that the sample is who you say that sample is. 
uh, you can basically leverage barcodes with um, bench sheets and you can scan in samples before you load up an instrument. You can also use barcodes for sample disposition. If you have samples that are ready to be disposed of, you can scan them in and out of um, a refrigerator, an incubator. Um, you can also leverage the barcode or um, an RFID for internal chain of custody. So you can track the movement of that sample within the laboratory. And you can also use it to find any sample within the lab um, to track real-time real progress on that sample. For laboratories that are dealing with controlled substances, there are a few more steps to the internal chain of custody. Not only do they need to keep track of how that sample was managed within the laboratory, but they also need to keep track of who handled the sample, the quantity of the sample, the units, what tests were performed on the sample, the weight of the sample, how much was left after the test, if any was disposed um, during the testing, and then also understanding where that inventory is by location, um, by the um, owner of that sample, and also the time it's spent in storage. And many, labor many laboratories actually leverage barcoding to scan samples in and out of custody. It's very efficient and effective. One of the great tools that LIMS provides that Excel sheets don't are dashboards. They provide managers as well as analysts with information on the samples that are going through the laboratory. So it's really having business intelligence at your fingertips. They can easily view trends across their operations. They can monitor in real time backlog reports, how many samples are waiting to be analyzed. Turnaround time reports, what is the average time it takes for a sample to be analyzed from uh, sample login through sample disposition. Um, what is the production look like? How many samples were analyzed in the laboratory for a period of time by analyst? Um, what's the workload look like for planning purposes? How many users were in the system? How much time did the user spend in the system? And the nice thing about the dashboards is they can be user configurable, so each user can have their own set of dashboards that are meaningful to them. Next, let's spend a few minutes uh, discussing instrument integration and how it works. Um, it's actually very straightforward. Instruments um, put out data in a number of different formats, um, CSV, comma separated value, XLS for Excel, text or ASCII, XML. Um, there's a number of different formats that they export. Those formats are typically unique based on the owner of the instrument because even if 10 people have the exact same instrument, they can each set it up differently so that each instrument would require a unique parser to import that data into the limbs. Uh, the nice thing is that once that data has been electronically moved into the system, there's no need for any hand entry. So all that's required is a review and approval. Um, clients can also take data from subcontracting labs and have them put that in a format that they can create a parser for so that that data can also be automatically imported. Now, if we look at a number of um, benefits of instrument integration, not only do they increase accuracy or throughput, but they allow laboratories to do more work with fewer resources. And also, it avoids duplication in that you don't have people having to copy and paste out of Excel data. They don't have to rekey in results that came off an instrument. And the return on investment is very quick. It's typically 9 to 12 months. And that also enhances productivity, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as eliminating errors. Another advantage that LIMS provide are the ability to view trends, um, graph data, eliminate outliers, and then also the potential to integrate with other systems such as um, JMP's SAS uh, statistical software so that those that need to can do a very sophisticated analysis of their data and possibly view trends that they were previously unaware of. Another advantage is the ability to automatically create reports. Once a report template is created, that template is populated with the validated and approved data from the LIMS so that it can automatically be created. Any signatures can automatically be inserted that are linked to the user's uh, username and password. The report can be automatically PDF'd and automatically emailed to the data consumer. And it can also be linked to the uh, secure client portal for um, the end users to access that report 
So to quickly summarize some of the benefits of ALIMS, it's about generating the highest quality data possible at an affordable price, um, deploying standardization across the organization, especially for laboratories or operations that have multiple sites. Um, it's about saving time, working more efficiently, working smarter, not harder, meeting the regulatory compliance requirements. Um, also, it's about delivering quality data rapidly to your clients, um, repeatedly, um, that's secure, and then also working intelligently. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the regulatory compliance as aspect. Regulatory compliance. For cannabis testing laboratories, they're required to have ISO 17025 certification. This is probably the most popular certification for analytical testing laboratories. However, there's other certifications as well. The states offer certification for environmental testing laboratories. There's also NELAC for environmental testing laboratories. If you are an uh, organization that's also managing or manufacturing a food product, then there's also some food safety guidelines that um, are required to be adhered to. So it really depends on what the goal of your laboratory is. Um, but it's something that can easily be determined with a quick literature review to see which guidelines would apply to your laboratory. Why ISO 17025? Well, it's a international standards organization accreditation, and it proves basically that the laboratory has an acceptable quality management program in place that's been audited by an independent vendor. It also provides accurate testing and calibration results, and that that laboratory performs tests against standards and generates results that are acceptable for different regulatory bodies. So the ISO standard for 17025 is divided into three um, segments or three major requirements, uh, structural, resource, and process. And we're going to go over those next. First, we're going to cover structural requirements, and these requirements refer to having a defined management and organization structure, so having an org chart in place so everyone knows who's responsible for what. So authorize people with necessary resources for executing their jobs, and who has the responsibility to ensure the effectiveness of not only the quality management system, but the laboratory activities, who monitors the performance and identifies the de deviations, and who's the person responsible for taking action to achieve improvement. So there's continual improvement in the laboratory. Next is resource requirements. Resource requirements deals with people, the personnel. Are there mandatory procedures in place um, for personnel management? Um, how, how is training tracked? Uh, this is laboratory training on specific tests and methods, as well as safety training, ethics training, all the other training that each team member goes through. And then also understanding the roles that can be assigned to each team member with their privileges and permissions within the system. So what they have the ability to do in the system, what they have the ability to see in the system, and then also peer review. So if one person enters and validates a result, a third or second person will be responsible for reviewing that result. So that's peer review when you don't have the same person entering, validating, and approving their own result. Additional resource requirements include the facility and environmental conditions. So basically, within a LIMS, one can manage different facilities. One can also set up monitoring systems that have automated alerts where thermocouples are placed in refrigerators, freezers, and incubators. And if temperature goes above a limit, uh, an email can automatically be sent out. A text message can automatically be sent. Um, and also, you can have real-time updates as to the, the temperature of your equipment, and you can monitor it over time as well. And then you can also generate reports on the equipment and share that with the metrology team as required. Another aspect of resource requirements includes equipment management as well as metrological traceability. So within a LIMS, users have the ability not only to set up and track pieces of instrumentation and equipment, they can also keep track of the date that that equipment was placed into service, the serial number, um, any calibration or maintenance that was performed on that instrument. They can attach those documents. They can attach the user manual. Um, and also within a LIMS, if the calibration has expired on a piece of equipment, it can block data from that 
uh, instrument or piece of equipment from going into the limbs. And it can do the same with employee training records. So there are a lot of controls that are built in. And you can also um, look at trends for the data to monitor the uh, performance of the equipment over time. You can attach documents as we spoke of earlier in terms of the uh, PDF of the equipment user manual. If there were any calibrations done, proof of those calibrations, any maintenance or repairs that were done on that instrument so that you can go to one source and see all of the documentation. Also, having it all electronic, it eliminates the opportunity for it to get lost or misplaced. Um, and you can also document all the materials that are used during your calibration and maintenance. Um, you can perform remote temperature monitoring, and that data can also be stored in the limbs, probably not the um, every 15 seconds of readings, but maybe the average, the max, and the min for the day. The final resource requirement we're going to be discussing is externally provided products and services. So with this, we're talking about reagents and supplies and standards that are purchased by the laboratory to be used in the testing. And the laboratory LIMS actually has the ability not only to just store the specifications of what's purchased, but also to keep track of the lot numbers, the expiration dates, the quantity purchased, the price, the vendor, so that if you need to reorder, you know exactly who you receive received it from. And then also, if you create any standards or reagents internally, you can also manage those by entering in the quantity produced, the lot number, the expiration dates of the supplies that went into that reagent. And then the limbs can be set up to look at that expiration date and not allow any data be, to be imported from the limbs. And, if that reagent has been used. And actually, some systems will block the use of that reagent if it's reached the expiration date so that the end user doesn't need to look anything up. It's all done for them. Um, and then also, if a new reagent comes into the laboratory, some labs will do their own testing to verify that it meets their standards before they release that to be used by the rest of the laboratory. And it works the same way. You can basically put that into a hold until it passes testing and then release it, change the expiration date um, to the date that it, the chemicals and reagents expired so that it can be used by everyone. And then again, um, not only does this prevent expired um, reagents and supplies from being used, but it also helps to ensure high data quality. Next, we're going to wrap up with process requirements. If we look at process requirements, it's a review of tests, tenders, and contracts. So basically, when test requests are entered, the appropriate evidence can be attached as necessary. And this can include um, the chain of custody that the samples came in with, any other documentation, any specifications that were sent to the laboratory can be linked to the customer and stored electronically within the LIMS. And then any new chain of custodies or other reports can be generated automatically from the LIMS. So if a chain of custody is received with the samples, that can be linked to the LIMS. And if the laboratory is going to send some of the samples out to a subcontracting lab for analysis, they can generate a new chain of custody to be sent with the sample. Next is the selection, verification, and validation of methods. Um, all methods, standard operating procedures, work instructions, PDFs of manuals can be uploaded and linked within the system. Version control can be applied. If there's any information on test or calibration items, they can be stored. So if a standard's received with a certificate of analysis, that can be linked to that standard within the system. And then the system is also able to prevent a user from selecting an instrument that's out of calibration. So in many systems, if you go to the dropdown of available instruments, if that instrument's out of calibration, it won't appear on that dropdown list. The next process requirement is, deals with nonconforming work or complaints. They're also refer, referred to as CAPAs, uh, corrective and preventative actions. Uh, this functionality exists in LIMS and allows uh, laboratory users to basically uh, document deviations, provide a description, and also um, define a tester method or an inventory item. They can basically determine the need to take action. They can classify the kappa into a type 1, type 2, type 3, etc. Then they can also document the actions that were taken. And then they can carry out and document the selected actions of as proof of the corrective process. And then they can also reassess the success of their action. So this is really the entire uh, corrective and preventative action process. So you have a problem, 
you identify the root cause, and then you put measures in place to prevent it from happening again. Uh, the LIMS system can basically document to an auditor um, and provide proof that you've done these steps in order, and then it also can document the time that it took to close any open issues, who the responsible parties were, and what the final outcome was. Another process requirement is technical record traceability as it relates to the audit trail. So basically, if a result needs to be altered after it's been validated and approved, the system needs to make sure it maintains the original result, the date and time stamps of the person that entered the original result, as well as the units. And after the change has been made, you need to keep track of the new result the date and time stamps, along with the um, person that made the change, along with the reason that that result was changed. This allows an auditor to run an audit report, and they can see what changes were made in the system to final data and the reason for that change. So it's very important to make sure you have an audit trail. Now another process requirement is data integrity. You want to ensure the validity of the results that are generated by your laboratory. One of the nice things about instrument integration is it provides the automatic transfer of data into the LIMS, so there's no opportunity for transcription errors. Also, the LIM system allows users to set up uh, specifications or limits for different tests and methods and also matrices so that if data is coming in from an instrument and it breaks a limit, it automatically displays a color-coded alert to the end user. So those alerts can allow the analyst to take the appropriate action, whether it's um, spawning an automated email or a manual email to a supervisor. Um, QC results can be che checked as well. Um, they can, the results can be trended to make sure that the, the result is valid and if a retest is needed, a user can send the sample back for retesting to validate that result. Next is reporting results. Um, in the LIMS, each sample is assigned a unique identifier that cannot be reused within the system. Um, results have different states from when they're entered to when they're approved. Privileges can be set to dictate who can approve results. So typically, one person will enter and validate a result, and then a second person, often a supervisor, will validate and approve that result. Uh, results can also be audited. We discussed this earlier, and reports can have version control control on them so that a user will know, a data consumer will know if this is an original report or an amended report. And then also any calculations within the system can be verified, validated, and locked so that they cannot be changed unless it's by the LIMS administrator. Um, the final result can be configured in terms of if any dilutions were done on the sample, any decimal places are required or significant figures, so that result can be configured for reporting. So oftentimes the raw result or the measured result is not what's seen on the report. Uh, finally, validating the limbs, uh, the customer and the vendor can work together, or they can also hire a third party that just focuses on validation. With IT support, the systems must also be protected against unauthorized access. Um, it's very important to have tight security so that only the people that need to have access to the system are able to gain an, uh, access to the system. And they also focus on maintaining data integrity throughout the system, and that's doing database maintenance and uh, nightly back backups. If there are any system failures, they'll be automatically documented, and the IT department will have processes in place to address any failures so that the system's back online. In many cases, if there's a, a failure today, um, the end user isn't even aware of it um, because everything's handled in the background. And then also it's important that all the uh, user manuals are available. They're um, either online or they're in PDF format. Some people prefer um, hard copies. And then also any calculations and data transfers are validated. Um, if there's an API in place and data is being transferred or web services, that's all been verified and validated before it's put into production. So to summarize this presentation, it's really important to select the right limbs for cannabis testing laboratory. Having the right tools for analysts to do their job not only makes them more effective and productive, but it also increases their efficiency. It helps contribute to high data integrity, to high data quality, um, eliminating mundane tasks such as copying and pasting or re-entering data or having to manually record temperatures leads to higher job satisfaction.
Um, it's really important to give people the right tools to do their job. And for laboratories, it not only increases productivity, but it also increases profitability. Additional benefits of LIMS include having a system where you can increase communication in your organization. So instead of tracking down the lab manager to check the status of a sample, you can actually log into the LIMS and check on the status yourself. And also, LIMS and laboratory automation provide a quick return on investment. Um, when you can automate a mundane task, it's not only more efficient, more effective, but it also leads to higher data quality. It also f facilitates regulatory compliance, as you've seen over the past few slides, um, everything from managing corrective and preventative actions, um, being compliant with electronic signatures, having security with Windows authentication, and also having a comprehensive internal chain of custody and audit trail on all the results. It really allows laboratories to be bulletproof for their audits. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. If you would like to receive a copy of this presentation or our free LIMS guide, Roadmap to LIMS Success, please don't hesitate to email info at atlab.com or call us at 800-565-LIMS-5467 or visit us on the web at atlab.com. Thanks again and have a great day.